Hi folks, Ben from Snowy's today taking you for a walkthrough of these awesome ultra lightweight Alto tents from Cedar Summit. Get it. The Altos Ultra Lightweight Tent from Cedar Summit has heaps of interior room thanks to their tension ridge poles, are made without any compromise when it comes to design, and they come in multiple setup options to suit adventures in just about every climate. Before we dive into this product, there is loads more content like this on our YouTube channel, so make sure you like and subscribe and you'll get notified of all of our latest content. Now let's jump in. Set up behind me here is the Alto TR1 Plus Tent from Cedar Summit. Now there's a few different versions of this tent. They're largely the same. The difference has been the Alto TR1 and the Alto TR2 are either one person or two person versions of the same tent. Then there's just the standard TR version and then there's the TR Plus as well. So TR1 Plus and TR2 Plus. The standard version has just a mesh inner, a polyester mesh inner. The TR Plus versions have a nylon inner. So the inner that we'll see shortly is a full nylon inner that makes it slightly warmer, better for really cold environments. And they also do a bike packing version of this tent, which has a shorter pole section. We've got another video on that one though. This is the tent set up behind me here now. Now weights for the tents for across the whole range start at about 930 grams and go through to about just under 1.3 kilos or a bit under 1.3 kilos. So they are made ultra lightweight. And this is a semi freestanding design, that one. Uh, this one here, sorry. It has a single pole that runs down the front here and requires these peg points at the front to be able to stand up. And then there's the, the pole comes down to a Y section at the rear here, a hub, and you've got a bit more foot space there. So semi freestanding, not freestanding as such. And a single person version of this as such means there's just one vestibule and one doorway here. Now going into the fabrics, um, I'll, I'll open this door. If you get a two person version of these tents, you get one of these entryways on both sides. This is a one person version, so we've only got one entrance here. Moving on to the fabrics. Now this is a, feels really, really thin, this fabric, but it is super durable. It's a siliconized PU coated 15 denier nylon with a 1200 millimeter waterhead rating. Don't be deceived by how lightweight and fragile this feels. These are really tough fabrics nowadays. Fabric technology has gone a long way and this offers such good durability and waterproof or weather protection for such lightweight. It's amazing that this sort of fabric. Now the inner is where you get choices with this tent here. Now Cedar Summit class here, there are three season or a three plus season version of this tent. The three plus version is what we've got here. And this is a 20 denier ripstop nylon inner. The three season is a 15 denier polyester inner, like the polyester mesh that we see here. So it's a polyester mesh, sorry, not just polyester. So this is a warmer tent to sleep in, better for colder climates. If you're in warm climates all the time, just get the one that has the polyester mesh in it, which is this section, this, this mesh that you can see on this panel here. Show you more on that vent shortly. Now there are some differences in the floor as well. The lightweight or the, the version that has the polyester mesh upper has a 15 denier floor, same as the fly sheet with a 1200 millimeter waterhead rating. The three plus version with the 20 denier nylon inner has a 20 denier floor with a 2,500 millimeter waterhead rating on the floor. So there's still lightweight floors and you can get footprints for these tents here if you're using it on really rough ground and that's gonna help this floor, this footprint, uh, the floor of the tent to last longer. And interestingly enough, there's two versions of the footprint. One of them finishes here and just covers the floor of the tent and then you can get their larger footprint which comes right out and covers the vestibule here as well. So you can actually have a floor in the vestibule if you like, that's an optional accessory for the tent. And the frame of the tent is DAC Featherlight NFL alloy poles. Really high quality poles um, that are used in all high quality tents, durable, flexible, and lightweight. So one of the real differentiating features with the Cedar Summit range of tents is what they call their tension ridge pole here, which are these poles that sit underneath here and they they slope upwards like this. Traditionally, a lot of tents will have a pole that slopes downwards, and that then drops this point of the tent down to sort of around about here. So you've kind of got to crawl in underneath the, the, the zipper to get into the tent. This tension ridge pole actually lifts the sides of the tents up. The height of the door is right up almost at the height of the fly sheet here. So for tall people particularly, getting in here is really easy. It also brings the side of the tent out nice and vertical down here and creates a bit of a dry entry. So if you do have to unzip this when it's raining, any water is just going to zip here and not inside the tent. So this tension ridge pole is a really awesome feature of um, all Cedar Summit tents and it's something they employed or teamed up with an external expert, someone from lead designer from DAC or the works with DAC 
to come up with this design, put it together and make sure it actually functions. So just one of the awesome things that Cedar Summit put into their tents. Now, before we jump inside, I wanna uh, have a bit of a run around the outside of the tent. So I'll zip this up first, just to show you the features there. So we've got um, a few points on the outside here that we could use for guy ropes if we like. Um, there are guy ropes included with your tent, you get four included. All of the points on the base here are uh, adjustable um, or tensionable. So these are all tension. So you can do it up loosely when you first put the tent up and then go around and apply some tension to each of these sections to make sure the tent is pitched nice and straight. There is a slight tensioner pole in here to lift the height of this up to allow a bit of space for uh, mats and pillows inside the tent as well. Moving around further, this is where we've got our central pole that comes down at this end here. So there's just one pole at this end. It clips into a really well thought out uh, hub or foot here. This allows the fly to be removed and attached really easily. Just another awesome feature of the tent here. Just a C-clip there that goes around there, twists around and that's what attaches it. So you've got one less peg. I haven't even got a peg in this section here at the moment. It all attaches through that one little foot on the base there. Moving on, two more adjustable guy ropes there, one to the inner, one to the fly. And then you've got this section out here. Now this isn't an external uh, vestibule, it's actually the uh, inner of the tent covers the inner, so the inner comes out this way. So you've got room for your mat down the side and then your bags here. And this covers right over the side of the tent here. Now they've intentionally left a bit of space here to allow airflow through here and up to the top of the tent where that uh, um, vent exists up near the tension ridge pole. But this bucket floor does come quite a way up the tent here. So you've got lots of protection plus this section here. Uh, for any rain or wind that might be driving this way into the tent. So best, uh, really good balance of ventilation and weather protection. Further around to the foot end of the tent, we've got slightly different pole configuration here where the center pole comes down and then spreads out like this across the two color coded uh, little clips here, same as the other end there. So these are really easily removed. Once again, no pegs or anything required. This creates a little bit more foot space here. So you've got bit of an upright wall at the end here for your feet to, to fit into. And then back around this side, nothing more to see here. This is the entrance inside. But before I jump inside, I just want to talk about the oversized, what they call their apex vents here. Now, the stiffener bars here, you can't close them down, but there is a zip underneath here that's adjustable from the inside that you can close the vent if you like. And I can see some people might say, what happens if rain's driven up this way? We'll see to someone have inter integrated a little flap here just to catch that water that might be driven up this way, it's gonna run back down the tent here. So minimal chance of any water getting inside here. Uh, and if you are at all concerned, then probably best to set the tent up such that this end of the tent is facing the prevailing winds. And that way you don't get wind driven rain coming towards your vents here. Now moving inside the tent, uh, I'll open up the vestibule first. This can be secured up here. There are little tabs up underneath here, those little boomerang tabs once again, just to secure the vestibule open here. This comes to a vestibule space that comes about 60 centimeters out from the edge of the tent to where this peak sort of finishes here. So enough room for a pack and nothing more to see in here. You can also fold this side back if you like. There's another tab on that side so you can open this right up if you like. Moving inside, the tent. Um, before I fold the door away, I will just point out that there is this vent in the top of the door here that is adjustable. So you've got quite a few ventilation options, even in the full nylon version of this tent here, you can open that vent up to allow a bit more uh, airflow through the tent there or close it up if you like. But right now I'm just gonna roll this door back and out the way and show you the height of the entranceway here, thanks to this tension ridge pole. Now, traditionally, me at six foot one, I'd probably have to duck underneath a fly sheet here to get in, but you can see I've actually got tons of head space here. If I rolled that up properly, this would be right up and out of my way. And I can sit straight in without even my head even hitting the fly sheet there. So if that was wet, I'm not gonna have wet hair getting in. And I can sit up in the doorway here and look straight out of the tent. I don't need to dip underneath a fly that would traditionally probably come down to around about here. So for tall people, this creates heaps and heaps of height in the entrance to the, the Alto tent here. Features inside, starting with the top. Um, we've got these tabs here that you could use, I suppose, for a, a wire if you had a light inside the tent here or something to hang a lantern. But you've also got this little tab here and then further along another tab here, and you notice that it says light bar. Now that lines up with, whoops, the light bar that came with our tent. This is the pole bag uh, that came with the tent. So we fit our poles in there normally. And this has got press studs on the back that line up with these press studs on these tabs here. So if I 
clip that on and do the other end as well. That then sits at the top there. I'll grab a head torch and it's not gonna show very well here during the day, but if I tuck a head torch, even two head torches in there and turn it on, it just acts as a bit of a diffuser. I will turn it on to show you, but it's not gonna show very well today. It just acts as a little bit of a diffuser to soften the light inside the tent. So you've got a bit of a light bar inside the tent there now. So it turns your tent bag into something a little more useful if you still wanted to take it with you. So moving across to the back of the tent, um, a vent on this side here as well. So we can unzip this and create more high level ventilation in the tent with these, uh, the full nylon inner. And in the middle here, uh, a vent that is, uh, I think I mentioned before, this was internally adjustable, uh, which is incorrect. I can open this up to a mesh panel, but if I wanna open the vent on the outside, I need to do that from the outside. So you wanna set that up before you get into the tent. If it's gonna be a really, really rough and windy night, maybe zip that closed so you stay dry inside the tent. Now moving back down this side of the tent here, I'm just gonna get out of the way because there's some other features here. These little tabs here line up with, or can be used with these bags. Now these are the bags that our tent are stored in. So these don't become useless that you uh, can potentially use. They then become storage bags inside the tent. So these two also have clips and little press studs on here. If we clip them on these points here, they then just become little hang pouches for storage inside the tent. And the design of these bags is such that it all kind of goes all together as one or can be packed separately, but we've actually got two different storage options there while we're in the tent. And on the opposite side, exactly the same thing. You just fold the top of these bags down a little bit to reveal the tabs that are on the inside. We can clip them in place here and that then becomes a storage spot for us while we are in camp as well. And one extra storage option right next to that, just here is a mesh pocket so we can put our phone or quick access things as well. So what are just storage bags as in typical Cedar Summit style, they thought, what else can we do with this? They've turned the storage bags which are already versatile in that you've got your tent packed up in three different storage options, two bags and a tent bag, turn into storage options inside the tent. Now there's some space inside the tent. I've got a Cedar Summit Ultralight regular sized mat in here, which fits really easily. I've got a total of 230 centimeters of length at the base of the tent. So I'm 185 centimeters. If I lie down, I've still got tons of room at the head end here. And because the end of the tent comes up a fair way vertically, We've got heaps of head space for a hood of my uh, sleeping bag or anything to fit in here. And then going down to the foot section of the tent, I've got size 13 feet and they fit really easily upright at the end there. So lots of vertical space from the length of the tent to my left hand side here. There's a to total width here at the widest point is about 80 centimeters. So I've got room for myself and then I've got room for, I could probably squeeze a pack there if I like. I'd probably put it on the outside, but I've certainly got room for a fair bit of gear here next to me. And if I sit up in the tent, this is where the tension ridge pole really comes into play again. The sides of the tent are really wide at the top here. It's about this far apart, so I've got so much headroom here. And the sides of the tent, even with this door done up, I've got sort of 20, 15 to 20 centimeters of shoulder space each side of me here, and another five centimeters above my head. And once again, I'm 185 centimeters. So loads of room to sit up and move around in this tent here. So even though this is a one person tent, I certainly don't feel claustrophobic inside. There is heaps of room to function in here. So that is the Alto TR1 Plus tent from Cedar Summit. As I mentioned, it comes in two different inners and it comes in a one and a two person version. And there's also a bike packing version, which is more compact designed for bike packing. Check out our other video on that one there. As with all Cedar Summit products, there's no exceptions made with the design of this tent here. Everything has two uses, everything has a purpose. They brought in external people to help them with the design and function of the tent. And it, they don't let anything hit the market until they know that it works and they know that it's made to the finest standard. So great tents from Cedar Summit. I'm pretty excited about them. Check them out online at snowies.com.au.